Great, 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 great. Hallelujah. God is good. Worthy of his praise. We get ready today. We start a season of prayer and fasting. And they'll be talking in a few moments about the theme of this year's season and the question that I want to pose to you so far, this, you know, so far in the midst of it. And ask God what it is that he wants to do within our hearts and lives as he takes us on this journey and prepares us for what I believe he has in store for us in 2020. I believe this year is going to be a phenomenal year. Every year is a great year, but I believe this year is going to be a phenomenal year because I believe that God has got some great things in store that he's getting ready to turn around and, and pour out upon us in such a measure that when it's all said and done, we're going to be shaking our heads, scratching it a little bit, maybe saying, wow, look what God has done. Because as we start this year and as we enter into this season and we allow God to get us focused on what it is he wants to do in us and through us, we need to allow God to have a way and realize that sometimes in life, though life doesn't seemingly sometimes hold the best of things for us and we face things that we don't understand, what God desires from us, no matter what's going on, is a simple factor that, well, you and I, we sort of become all in. I want you to sit back for a minute and watch this video with me just for the next couple of minutes as I get ready to share with you what the Lord has started birthing in my spirit for 20 and 20. Jimmy, go ahead. Have you ever thought about the cards that you've been dealt? Have you ever taken the time to examine your life as if it were a hand of cards? For many of you, you would look at the hand that you've been dealt and go, I, I've been given a great hand. I don't want to change a thing. And still there are others. You would look at a few of your cards and you would go, these are the hard and bitter cards. It's as if we would say, if I could just trade in these cards, my life would be so much better. But that's just it. You can't trade in the cards that you've been dealt. These are your cards, whether you like the way they feel or not. It's interesting. The people that we want validation from, the people we want to like us, the people we want to impress, we hide these uglier cards behind the more noble, significant, prettier cards. These are the cards that we want people to see. These are the cards that we've based so much our identity on. It's human nature, I guess. But deep down, we know the cards that we've been dealt. There's no escape in it. It's who we are. We can't reshuffle the deck. We can't trade any of them in. It's in our DNA. It's in our makeup. The truth is, you are all in. But what if we stopped? What if we stopped and just took some time to look at the hands that we've been dealt? Is it coincidence? Or is it just life? Or is it God? The argument would be, why would an all-knowing, all-loving God give me this deck of cards? If He really loved me, why these cards? And these are the cards of pain, of chaos, of guilt, of hurts, of hang-ups, of habits. And amongst this deck, for some of you, there are some really cruel cards. Cards of rejection, depression, addiction, abuse, and the card that none of us can escape from. But if we were to stop and think back, oh, there are some great cards in this deck, like when you were a little kid and the first time that you made your dad laugh and he laughed so wholeheartedly, that was a great card. That was a great day. The first time you tied your shoes, your first kiss, when you graduated college and nobody said that you could do it. The first time that you used your gifts and talents and someone looked at you and you knew they meant it and said, you are good at this. And the first time you stood up for yourself. These are the pretty cards. These are the ones that we move to the front of the deck. It's a sad truth, but we really care what other people think of us. And these are the cards that we reuse. We relive. We reshuffle because we care for validation from other people. 
But what does God think? What if God were to take a look at all our cards? Which ones would he choose? More than likely, they would not be the prettier, significant cards, but they would be an array of both good and bad cards. So you see, he wants to use the most heart-wrenching cards as much as he wants to use the cards that have brought you peace and joy. Don't discount the fact that God wants to use the most difficult cards because these cards have brought blessings and they have given us the greatest learning lessons of life. To God, these aren't a bunch of good and bad cards. To God, they're just cards. And if we surrender, we can see the hand that we've been dealt. It can give God glory. It can remind us that it's not our story, but His story. And if we're really still, we can even catch a glimpse of heaven. So the question is, Aren't you tired of pretending to deal with your deck of cards? Aren't you wore out trying to hide behind some of the more glamorous cards? Doesn't it shortchange God with the story of our life? To Him, you have been given the greatest hand that you could ever imagine. And for me, I'm all in. I'll play the hand that I've been dealt. As we begin this season of prayer and fasting and turning our attention towards the Lord from a measure, asking Him, Lord, what is it that you'd have me to do? What is it you want to do in my life? How is it you want to use me? So on and so forth. I'm mindful of the scripture that's up on the screen this morning, Isaiah 30. And actually, this is verse 21. I forgot to change that one thing. Shame on me. And he says this in verse 21, he says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. I believe during this season of prayer and fasting, that one of the greatest things that is going to happen in your life, is going to happen in mine, is that simple truth. That no matter what's going on in my life, no matter what I have planned, you know, we, we order our plans and we have our plans, but it's God that directs our steps. That no matter what's taking place in the midst of all that's taking place around about us, if we choose to, we'll turn our ears towards the Lord and we'll hear his voice behind us saying, that no matter what it is that you think's going on, no matter what the direction is, that he is going to direct your steps and your path to the very place that he wants you to be. And I believe that because of a very simple truth that, that as you and I, and that's what we're going to be talking about concerning the season of prayer and fasting that we're heading into, that as you and I allow God to minister into our hearts and lives and we turn our direction towards him, we get our sights off of ourselves, get our sights off of our circumstances, and we get our sights set towards him in the midst of whatever is going on in our lives, that all of a sudden we will hear his voice. And we'll hear God speak to us clearly about the direction that it have for you, for your life, your ministry, the things that he wants you to accomplish in life, that sometimes maybe even in the future that he has for your life. I can go back in my thought process many, many years ago and the visions that God had given to me, visions that I'm literally walking in today, things that I never thought would ever happen, but I've seen God bring to pass. And in the midst of it, when you hear what God is saying into your heart and life, and he's talked to you about the direction that he wants you to go in, that as you go to walk in, in other words, you step out in faith, that's when God shows up in a mighty way within the midst of your heart and your life.
So as we go into the season of, of prayer and fasting, need to say the theme of it is, is all in. And, and the question that we need to ask ourselves and you need to ask yourself is, are you all in? Are you all in? Because it's a very important question when you stop and consider it, the reality of life itself. Because you see, you and I, we need to make a determination. No matter what we're facing, no, what, no matter what's going on, no matter what it is that God gets ready to speak into our lives over these next 21 days and the many days thereafter, that when we hear God speak, am I going to be all in? We can take a look, as the video did, about the, the, the many tragedies and the circumstances that we face in life. And sometimes we can allow what we face in life to affect us in such an adverse way that truly we never come out of the midst of it. I know people that have faced many, many tragedies in life, and some of them to this day are, are still way out there. And I know others that have faced tragedies that have turned around and realized that in the midst of whatever is going on in their life, that God is still God, and God is still on his throne, and that God still loved them, and God was working in the midst of their life, even though they didn't understand it. I'm mindful of the scriptures that out of the book of Romans uh, 8, 28 and through 30, and I'm about the reality that you know God literally wants to direct the very steps he wants to accomplish what he wants to and that all things work together for the good and in the midst of all that reality that when I realize that God is working in my heart and in my life and you realize that he's doing the same thing in your life even though you may be facing some very tragic you know, tragic things and even though the cards that you're being dealt right now are not good cards and you look at them and you don't like them that in the midst of the situation really and truly what's going on as God is asking you that question, are you all in? Because you see, being all in with God is the only thing that he's really concerned about. Now let me preface that thought with this. You mean to tell me that God's not concerned about the tragedies and the things that I face? Well, yes, he absolutely is. There's no question. I'm not going to get into the, the debacle of all that. But the bottom line is that all things work together for the good. And God uses circumstances and situations like the video shows us to transform our hearts and our lives so that what God can do is take us by the hand and walk us into the future that he has in store for us. So he says, I know the very thoughts that I think for you, and I know the very plans that I have for you. I know what's in store. You just got to hold on to me and allow me to take you in that direction so that when you get ready to walk into what it is that I have for you, you'll be prepared for it in a mighty way. So it always boils down to that very simple truth in your life and in my life and in everything that we face in life. Am I all in? Am I sold out to God? There's the reality of life itself. And so when you start to understand that, you need to recognize this, that with God, there's no such thing as in between. He says in, in, in the scriptures, why do you falter between two opinions? You're either for God or you're not for God. And that's how God operates within the midst of everything that's going on. There is no in between. There's no maybe. Maybe does not exist, I do believe, in any way, shape, or form in God's economy. There's no such thing as chance, if you will. Even though it seems like there's a lot of things that are of chance in life itself. Chance does not exist within the framework of God's economy or within the midst of how he operates his kingdom. So when God looks at you and me and God desires us to walk in a measure and in a way and he places before us a desire that he has for our hearts and our lives, the direction that he wants us to go in, what he's looking for is us to reach up and with a hand that says, God, grab a hold of my hand and take me where you want to go. Knowing full and well that as the scripture says that you are in the palm of his hand and there's nothing that can pluck you out of it. Because when you're in God's hand, let me tell you something. As God says, if I'm for you, who in the world can ever be against you? Amen. And when God's for you, God will go before you. God will accomplish what needs to be. And God will bring you on the other side victorious in the midst of it. All he's looking for is a simple reality. Are you all in? Are you sold out? Have you made up your mind that no matter what's going to go on, that I'm going to follow God? I'm mindful of Jesus' words in Matthew 12, 30, where he says that he who is not with me is against me. I'm here to tell you this morning that no matter what's going on, God is not looking for any maybes this morning. He's looking for the fact that I am all in or I'm not. 
Here's a reality. Even if you think you're, you, you, know, you have a maybe, the reality of it is that that's a no in God's economy. That's how God operates. In other words, it's either yes or it is no. There's no in between with God. And he's looking for you and I to have that reality with inside of our hearts. So what does that do? <coughs> Excuse me. What does that have to do? If you will, with the reality of what we're entering into in the season of prayer and fasting. You see, season of prayer and fasting is one of the greatest things that you'll ever face in life or come to. Because when you make a choice to say, I'm going to fast before the Lord. And whatever it is that God speaks into your heart to fast. If you're going to go on a whole 21-day fast and only drink nothing but water, great. That's, that's what God's called you to do. Do it. If he tells you to give up maybe your favorite beverage, if it's coffee, you want to feel, man, I can't give up my coffee. But you sense God give, telling you to give up your coffee, give up your coffee. Whatever it is that God wants you to do during this season, do it with the right attitude and the reality because you're doing it because what? You're all in. In other words, you made a choice to sell yourself out to what God desires to do inside of you. See, fasting... Is an act of discipline. That's what it is. It's also an act of it's also an act of your will. You yielding your will to what God desires of His will. That's part of what fasting is all. It's all about. It's about giving of yourself to what it is that God desires, so that in the midst of what's going on, God can transform your heart and your life and get you on the same page that He's on, so that He can fulfill inside of you what it is He wants to accomplish, so that He can use you to accomplish the great things of His kingdom. Because listen, I'm here to tell you this morning that God wants to use you during the season of prayer and fasting as you find His heart and you find His mind, you find His life in the midst of it, and as you make a choice to be pleasing to God, what happens is when God changes your heart, you'll be the person that'll start to change the world. You'll change the world around you. Why? Because God wants to use you in the midst of it all. Because really and truly, he created you for that very purpose. He created each and every one of us to change the very world that we are around. And in the midst of it, for that to happen, something has to change inside of me. There has to be a change that takes place inside of my heart and my life. And the only way that generally comes about is when I make the choice to get myself all in and I yield myself to what God wants to do. Amen? And so when you choose to do that, that's when all of a sudden God shows up on the scene and God changes everything. Because you see, for your, your fasting, your season of fasting, to be something that is pleasing to God, your heart has to be right before God. And the only way our heart ever gets right before God is by pressing into him and allowing the Holy Spirit to transform our heart from the inside out. In other words, God has to change and transform it. Can I tell you this morning, as the scriptures say, the heart is more deceitful above all things. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But in the midst of it, when the heart's more deceitful above all things and it's despisedly wicked, and the scripture tells me, then who can really know how bad it really is? I'm here to tell you that the only one who knows the condition of your heart is the Lord himself. Because he says, I search the hearts and they examine the motives of mankind and to give all people the due rewards according to what they, their actions deserve. I'm here to tell you this morning that if you press in and you allow God to do something inside of you during the season of prayer and fasting, God is going to transform you from the inside out. And then he's going to start to use you to accomplish something great for his kingdom. Somebody give him praise in the house this morning. Because you see, that's what your relationship with God is all about. It's God raising you up in such a measure that he can use you as an instrument to accomplish something great for the work of his kingdom. So when you and I make this determination that from this day forward, however it is that God wants to use you and, and fast before him, that you allow God to start to shape and mold you and conform you into the image of his son, what will happen in the end is that when the end comes is in the midst of it, you will be the instrument and the warrior that God called you to be, and God will start to accomplish things inside of your heart and your life. And then God will start to use you. Because you see, just as that video started talking about the reality of some of the things that we need to ask ourselves and we need to take a look at what's going on in our lives. If you can see your life, every circumstance, every situation that you've been in, all that you've gone through from the perspective of God's sight, you'll realize that God uses the changes and the circumstances that go in your life. In other words, the very hands that you are dealt in life itself 
to help you and me realize that to be all in is the very place that God wants you to be. And not only that, that God will take that circumstances and those situations and he'll transform the intent of our hearts in such a measure in a way that you and I will become per, per, uh, pure, <laughs> pure in his sight and he'll be able to use us in a measure that uses us to change the very world that is around each and every one of us. Only when you and I, only when you and I are all in Will God take the intent of our hearts and make them right before him in the measure that he can use us so you and I can not only find favor in his sight, but he can use us to be a favor to the world around about us. Accomplishing something for his kingdom. Somebody give him praise. <clears throat> see, we see this in scripture. In Isaiah 58. And that's sort of the focus of this whole season of prayer and fasting. You see in verses 3 through 5. A situation that sort of takes place. Where Israel thought they were right before God. And in those verses as you read them. You come into an understanding of the midst of what was going on. Around about the nation of Israel. You discover the simple truth. That even though they may have thought that they were right before God. All of a sudden because they weren't right before God. What was happening is that their whole attitude was not right in the presence of God. And God had to change them. I'm here to tell you this morning that until you and I discover what it is that God wants to do inside of our hearts and our lives and we start to yield to God, all of a sudden really what's transpiring is that God can't change us until we're willing to be changed. And only when we're willing to be changed can God accomplish what it is that needs to be accomplished and then God can use us to accomplish the things for his kingdom. What happens in the midst of Isaiah 58 is a simple truth that you need to grasp a hold of. One... You need to get out of the sight, uh, out of your own thought process that you know everything, that you're in, re in reality you know nothing. But in the midst of the knowing everything, you allow God to change you, you discover that in knowing nothing, that God will transform it so that you know everything. In other words, you'll know what it is that God wants you to know, and as you grasp a hold of what it is that God wants you to know in life, and you start to walk in that measure through that season of prayer and fasting, God not only changes and transforms you, but he sets you up for the future he has in store, amen? And that's what your life is all about. You see in verses 6 through 11, and I'm just throwing this out before you this morning, not that I'm going to, going, going to go into any great deal, detail on it this morning, you discover the reality that mankind has a season and a prayer of fasting, that they think is right before God. In other words, not just fasting as we're doing in the natural, but also within the spiritual realm of our lives. In other words, we think things are right before God. We think this is what God wants. We think this is what God wants us to do. And then all of a sudden, we discover in the midst of it, as they do through verses 6 through 11, they realize that the fast that they had been fasting before God was never the fast that God wanted for them, but instead God had something else in mind. Can I tell you this morning that during the season of fasting, if you allow God to speak into your heart and life, he's going to show you what he has in mind for you. He's going to show you what it is he wants to do, you, do in you and what it is that he wants to do through you. And in the measure of that, accomplish the very things that he has in store for his kingdom. Because God has a plan. You're a part of his plan. You're a part of what it is he wants to do in the future. If you'll just allow God to do it inside of you. And you say to God this morning, Lord, I'm all in for what it is that you want me to do. I'll accomplish what it is. Because listen, church, God is looking for a heart. All manner and sort of hearts whose intent and even their very thought process desires to have God accomplish whatever it is that he wants to accomplish inside of them. The bottom line boils down to this. Am I at that place in my walk with God that I'm willing to allow God to have his way and accomplish what it is that he wants to accomplish? When you take a look in Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 11, which is going to take a look at three verses of the scripture this morning, you're going to start to discover the reality about what being all in truly is all about. But not only what it's all about, but what it is that it will accomplish inside of you and what God will do inside of you if you allow him to. You see, being all in literally does one thing first and foremost. It imparts God's commission into your life. 
In verse number 6 of Isaiah 58, you discover this when you read what it is that God is saying to the nation of Israel. He says, this is the kind of fast that I want. He says, I want to free those who are wrongly in prison. I want to lighten the burden of those who work for you. I want to let the oppressed go free and I want to remove the chains that bind people. When you start to understand that the reality of what it is that God really wants to do, in other words, the kind of fast that God wants to do inside of you, in other words, he wants to change and transform your life and you allow God to have his way and you get out of the way, God will start to do something in you that glorifies his name and changes everything around you. Somebody give him praise because when you allow God to have his way, that's when God goes into the midst and God commissions you and I to accomplish great things for his kingdom. See, church, in verse number six, it reminds us of a simple truth. That if you want to be free, free others. If you want to stay out of a spiritual prison or darkness in your life, release those who you have bound that very same way. If you want to have an easy life, a good life, make other people's life good. Make their life easy. If you want to stop dragging your past and your sins behind you, <coughs> excuse me, the weights of it behind you and everything that goes on in your life, break the chains of those that you do not honor by speaking ill of them. In other words, allow God to start to work in your life in such a measure in a way that your life is transformed and you stop bringing up their past or the circumstances, the things they've done. And in other words, you start to bless them in life. You see, that's part of the reality of what it's talking about, that this is the kind of fast that I want out of you. I want a fast that goes on inside of you that transforms you so I can use you to transform others. Are you hearing me this morning? See, church, life is not as complicated as you and I choose to make it. I know some people that all their life is nothing but complicated. Always complicated. You discover that there's things that are going on in their life that they just don't like. They're always complaining, they're grumbling and groaning. I know nobody does that out here. But nonetheless, it goes on. And in the midst of it going on, what transpires, what they fail to recognize in the midst of it all, that it is not as complicated as they choose to make life itself. Life is simple if you just allow it to be. In other words, just like you say, this is the kind of fast. Words, I want you to get yourself out of the way and allow me to live through your life so that you can be a blessing to other people. Once that happens inside of you and God can transform you, let me tell you something, life will become simple for you. Because then, all of a sudden, it's not all about you. It's all about Him. It's all about Him living through you. So that when people see you, who they see is Him, instead of seeing you with all your... Don't shout me down. But the, nonetheless, the reality boils down to this, is that we only complicate things, and we do it because really and truly... We want life to be all about us. Get yourself out of the way. Quit your complaining and all that. And then all of a sudden that's when God comes in and starts all kinds of circumstances changing it all. See, God wants you all in. That's what he expects. Second point is this. That being all in literally inspires God's commitment to you. See, in verse number 7, he says these. He says, share your food with the hungry. Give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them. And do not hide from the relatives who need your help. In other words, take a look around you at everybody that is around about you. And instead of being so concerned about yourself, how good looking you are, start helping everybody else around you. Share what it is that God has blessed you with. You see, can I tell you something about the reality? There's so many people out there, especially in, in Christianity, uh, that, that want to be wealthy. They want all kind of and sort of thing. And they're as poor as can be. Now, I'm not talking about the, the, that kind of thing this morning. I'm really not. I'm talking about the principle behind it. And the principle being this, that if you ever want to be wealthy in anything in, in the kingdom of God, give what it is. Share what it is that you have. See, God only entrusts you as much as that he's been given to you that you've used wisely. 
Are you hearing me this morning? In other words, God will never entrust more to you in life itself until what he has given to you, you use it wisely. When you use what God has given to you wisely, that's when God sees it to be unfaithful. And when God sees faithfulness, he blesses it and he blesses it all the more. Amen? And that's the reality of life. So you see, being, being all in inspires God commitment to us because he says, when you take what it is that I've given you, you start to use it wisely by touching other hearts and lives instead of just being concerned about you. He says, that's when I'll show up. That's when I'll transform things. That's when I'll change every situation. Listen, if God's blessings aren't flowing, we need to take a look at the intent of our hearts towards others. Because see, if all you're concerned about is me, myself, and I, you'll never be concerned about him. Because you see, you'll get in the way of what it is that he wants to use you for and accomplish inside of you. See, Luke 6, 38, very familiar scripture to every one of you. It talks about the reality, given it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom. It'll be all running over in your heart and your life. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning that that'll never happen until you get a heart that is willing to allow Isaiah 58, 7 to live through you. Where, in other words, God takes what is used entrusted into your hand and you use it for the kingdom of God. When that happens, it changes everything. And the last point is this. To be all in, you've got to understand, you've got to allow God to infuse his collaboration within your heart and your life. You see, in verse number 8, it says, Then your salvation, once you've made a choice to do these things, once you've made the choice to be all in, God says, then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. What I'm here to tell you this morning is this, that when God can finally get a hold of our hearts, when he can finally transform and change us, and that's what the season of prayer and fasting can truly be about, if you make the choice to press in and allow God to work inside of you and through you, that in the midst of that, when you allow God to do it, what God himself will do, he'll partner up with you, and when he partners up with you in the midst of all that's taking place and what he's doing all around about you, God himself will collaborate in the midst of everything Thing that's going on and you'll see the glory of God go before you accomplish great and wondrous things for the kingdom of God and God will transform hearts and lives he'll see you as an instrument that he can use out to touch the lives of everybody all around you and when you touch hearts and lives and all they can see is Jesus instead of seeing you that's when lives are changed and transformed that's when the kingdom of God is coming upon the face of the earth that's when lives are transformed so God can be exalted and glorified we need to exalt and glorify him all the more and I'll allow God to, but it only happens when you make the choice to be all in. In Habakkuk 3.19, <clears throat> the scriptures say that the Lord is my strength, and he'll make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me to walk on my high hills. That happens in life to the person who's all of a sudden in life set themselves aside and said, God, I want you to be my steps. I want you to be my voice. I want you to be my hands. I want you to be everything. In other words, God, I want you to live through me and accomplish the things you want to accomplish on this earth. When you make that choice, in other words, when God sees that you're all in, God will become your strength. He will direct the very steps of your path, of your feet. And he'll cause you to walk in places that you've never understood before. Why? All because of one thing. You've chosen to walk for him instead of walking for yourself. What you need to understand this morning is that God wants you to taste and to see that he is good. He wants to bless the man, the woman, the child who trusts in him. See, being all in is coming to that place of saying, Lord, I trust you. I'm all in. I want you to be the center of my life. I want you to accomplish what needs to be accomplished. I want you to glorify 
what needs to be glorified. Here am I, as Isaiah said, use me. When you do that in life, when you choose to be all in, that's when God changes everything. And that's when God can trust you with everything. And that's when God can use you for everything that you need to be used for. I'm going to ask you to stand up with me this morning. I know I ran over some, not well, a few minutes. Hey, that's good. See, I got done earlier than I thought I would. I need another 10 minutes to preach. We need to understand this morning. We're getting ready to share communion in a few moments. I figured there's no better way to start our season of prayer and fasting than to share communion. Break the bread of life. And allow God to minister and to speak into our hearts and lives. And I can think of no better way of preparing our hearts for a season of prayer and fasting than to be willing to break that bread with the Lord today and allow the Lord to have his way. See, God's fast is a fast that is all in. For it's a fast all about your heart. It's a fast all about your spirit. It's a fast all about the intent of your heart and your spirit. And what you choose to do with it. See, I believe over the next couple of weeks as you and I allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and as you will, we allow him to start to change us and transform us and we allow, we allow him to draw us closer to him, that we're going to see God not only transform our hearts and transform our lives, but we'll also catch his vision for what it is that he wants to do not only in our lives, but within us as a body of believers, as a church. And in the midst of that, we'll literally start to reflect his cause and what it is that he wants to do in each one of us. So my question to you is simply this. Are you all in? I want to ask the ushers to come forward to prepare for this season of communion. I'm mindful of the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And as a background of this thought, of the words that he said, I want to lay a picture before you. The Apostle Paul, probably the greatest apostle of all of them, and they were all great, there wasn't a one who wasn't. God doesn't choose anything that isn't great. That includes you and me, by the way. That, in choosing the Apostle Paul, he was an apostle out of season. He came some years down the road. But that didn't stop the Lord from speaking to his life, everything that he spoke into the other apostles' lives. He took him away for a time and a season, the scripture show, seems like for about three years or so. And he spoke into his spirit. And one of the things that he spoke into his spirit was regarding communion. And he said these words in, in the 11th chapter. He says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was uh, betrayed, he says he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he went on. He said, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new, is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And I can picture the Apostle Paul sharing this with the church at Corinth. And I can picture the Apostle Paul in his mind thinking about the words that Jesus himself had spoken to him concerning it. I can also think about the reality that maybe you're going on in his mind. He says, boy, I sure wish instead of standing against the Lord at that time in my life, I had been walking with him. Maybe, who knows, I could have been there that day or that night in the upper room. Sharing in that first communion. What a powerful time. Now we weren't there for that first communion, none of us were. 
But you see, nonetheless, as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of him until he comes. So today as we share in communion, as we prepare our hearts, and we need to prepare our hearts, we need to say, Lord, is there anything inside of me that's hindering me today from receiving of your communion? Because when you receive this communion today, what you are signifying is what the Lord has done for you also. He broke his body so that our bodies don't have to be broken. He shed his blood so that our blood does not have to be shed. He gave everything so that you and I could have life today and have it more abundantly. In John 10.10, 10, he said those words, Jesus. That he said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I wonder when he spoke those words, if he was looking down the road at the cross that was going to be coming. Knowing full and well so that you and I can have the abundant life that he came to give us. Knowing full and well that it was going to cost him everything. I say that to us this morning for a very particular reason. That as we get ready and the ushers get ready to share with you. Or actually they're going to stand here and going to hold it. And you're going to just come and take your sacraments and take them back to, the, to your seat. And we'll all share together. But I want you to ask yourself that question. One, is there anything hindering me? And if there is, please let the Holy Spirit speak to you and let it get set aside. You might have something against somebody. You need to reconcile it right now in your own spirit. That you're going to go and make you know, things right. If there's things happening and going on that you need to do, then man, take care of those things. Surrender everything. Be all in, if you will. And when you are, and we would take of this communion, really what you're doing, you're saying, Lord, I not only recognize that you can shed your blood so that I don't have to shed mine, but also that by your blood being shed, that I have the forgiveness of all my sins. And that by the stripes that you bore and the brokenness of your body, that Lord, I can receive any healing that I need, physically, spiritually, and my life can be made whole. And, and so as you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, and if you feel that all is well, I want to ask you right now to come forward to the ushers. I'm going to ask you to take the sacraments and go back to your chair. In a few moments, we're going to share together from what the scripture said and Paul was sharing and that day, and the, that last supper that they had. And being mindful of that time and season when Jesus, knowing full and well what light ahead for him, being beaten and going to the cross, broken, that he was going to face it for the sins of all of humanity, those present at that day and today, those of us that are here, that he did so willingly. So today, as we willingly partake of his sacraments, let us also willingly be willing to sit down and set aside everything that could hinder us from walking in the fullness that communion with him has for us. And as we get ready in a few moments to partake together of these sacraments, I want you to be mindful of what it is God wants to do in you during this season. And as you get ready to take the sacraments, Realize that you're able to partake of it today because of one very simple truth. And that simple truth is this, that Jesus himself was all in. Brother Kenny. Thank you. Brother P.L. That Jesus made the choice to be all in. And it's only because he is all in you and I have the opportunity to be all in today. So, church, are you all in? Are you all in? Yeah. Has everybody been served? 
If you haven't been served, please raise your hand if you'd like to be served. All right, it looks like everybody's been served. Again, going back to the words of the Apostle Paul. As Jesus shared with him what took place on that night so many years prior. He says, I received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you. And today that we deliver one to another. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, Sitting there with his apostles, he took the bread and he broke it. I want you to picture that with me for a minute. And then I want you to picture with me him looking down the road at being broken, hanging on the cross. And he said when he had given thanks, and Lord, today we give you thanks for the representation of what this bread represents in our lives. That you were willing to break yourself and give yourself that we might have life. And so for that, Lord, today we truly are thankful as we get ready to go into 2020 in a measure to where you can transform us and change us and use us. That, Lord, as broken bread we need to be. That truly, oh God, that we will recognize not only the price you paid, but that you're willing to continue to pay and that we need you also. I ask, oh God, that you bless it in Jesus' name. And so he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Undo this in remembrance of me. And everybody took of the bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And Paul went on and he said in the very same manner, he also took the cup after supper and I can just picture the apostles breaking the bread not understanding what he was saying to them and then he, he lifted this cup of wine and he says this cup is the new covenant in my blood and I want you to realize this morning that his blood represents the covenant that God chose to make with you and me today a covenant he didn't have to make but he chose to and he made it all because he was willing to shed his blood because he chose to be all in he said this cup is the new covenant in my blood he says but take of it as often as you do in remembrance of me in other words in remembrance of the price that I willingly paid and then everybody partook what you partake Lord, this morning, we humble ourselves in your presence with thanksgiving upon our heart, joy in the depths of our soul, mindful of the price that you willingly paid so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. This day, Lord, I lift before you every one of my brothers and my sisters, and I'm asking for the riches of your bounty, your goodness, your mercy, your grace to overshadow each and every one of us. And that throughout this season of prayer and fasting, that you give us ears to hear what it is that you by your spirit are saying. That you give us eyes to be able to see beyond the natural into the realm of your spirit what it is that you want us to see. And a heart and a mind to be able to comprehend and understand the fullness of all that it is that you want to do in us during this season. And that in the midst of it all, Holy Spirit, you'll help every one of us to be all in with what it is that you want to do in us and through us. For your glory. I ask it in the matchless name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Get Lord an offering of praise. Thanks for being with us this morning. Lord bless you. Have a Jesus filled day. God